and today I'm going to show the second part of my process on labeling my candles because I am also a graphic designer I make my own labels um, which sometimes is a problem because sometimes I can't decide do I like this thing am I bored of looking at this thing and it is much harder uh, to do work for myself which is a very common problem but I will show you my process so I'll be labeling the orange blossom and chamomile candle that I made yesterday so to start with I work in Adobe Illustrator um, it's just easier for when I want to bring in graphics or anything like that and I keep sort of a master file this is a new one uh, for this year but I keep sort of a master file for all of my designs and based on the labels that I use I open a template and just copy the design from there so here's my chamomile and orange blossom label um, because of how the tins are I use two labels I have a circular one that goes on the lid and I have a rectangular one that goes on the tin itself um, versus my 13 ounce candles which is just one label so what I'll do here is I like to save my own templates um, and I'll label them usually with the manufacturer and the size sometimes just the size so this OL5375 this is the label for the lid so OL is online labels um, link in the description so I will open that template first and then I'll open this I don't like to put dots in file names it's just a weird habit so 115 by 3 is actually 1.15 by 3 and that is for the body uh, so what I'll do when I'm working here is I have my layers have my artwork layer and this just shows where this is where it'll print so I'll show you in one second so I will just copy these control C command C excuse me I'm on a MacBook but it's control C if you're PC and I'll group them and lay them out here so I usually just drag and copy across you can use the guidelines in here um, but I am usually good at eyeballing it to get it where I need it to be alright so those are my lid labels even though I only have one candle at the moment um, I will still make a whole sheet just so that when another order comes in I'll already have them ready I'll go over that process a little bit later but these are ready to go so I will save these and I usually save them I have everything separated by product type PDFs for print is where all of the finished labels are so I'll label it sheet instead of just label so this would be Cameron orange boss tin lid tin it's like doing this with somebody watching you tin lid sheet so that is where I will save the PDF so that's ready and I can close that out and because I work in Illustrator um, I don't need to save it as an Illustrator file I can just open it back up as a PDF and edit it that way just make sure you don't turn off uh, retain layers so same process I will put these on the art layer 
and I need to go back because I just realized I forgot to do something but first I will copy these across and the way I make sure that these are lined up is the sides of this color bar here it needs to be even on both sides and as I said I've gotten good at eyeballing this um, being a old graphic designer career wise uh, is very helpful you just learn lots of shortcuts and you learn how you work so not everybody can trust themselves to eyeball I don't know if I trust myself all the time but enough to get the job done so what I'm gonna do on here that I need to go back and do on the top is I need to turn off these so that they don't print um, it's not a huge deal because if you line them up properly they they shouldn't show up on the the template it should be just out of your label um, printing area but it's better not to risk it so I promise I can type it's just trying to type on the video cam and orange gloss tin body sheets same as a PDF and you want to leave preserved illustrator editing capabilities this is what you want to leave on otherwise the next time you try to open it you'll have a flat PDF and that will cause all kinds of problems so those are ready to go and let's fix this I did not mean to put these all on the same layer so I'm gonna just have to go through and manually delete all of these circles this is why it's good to check your work as you go along um, even doing this as long as I have sometimes I still move so fast that I just miss things um, this isn't the worst I've done but it's still when you're when you're trying to be efficient it's not it's not good um, especially if you have say eight or nine candles that you're trying to do all right so these are good to go so I'm gonna save this in my master design file and then I will open these and these are print ready and I will be back after I print them okay so now I've got my labels printed out and I will show you the next step of this process these are the body labels they go on the tin here and they are from sheetlabels.com they are the SL742 labels and they are rectangular I don't know if you can see super well um, I'll show you when I put them on the candle and then these are the ones that go on the lid these are from online labels uh, the difference is that with sheet labels I like their classic crust labels they have like a linen texture feel online labels does not have that type of paper so originally I used online labels for all of my labels and once I found sheet labels and classic crust I switched um, but I do still use online labels for a few things so this is the chamomile and orange blossom candle that I made yesterday when I finish especially when I make different scents I'll just stick a little post-it note on top so that I know okay this is that scent and this is what it looks like so the first thing I'll do is I'll trim the wick as usual I didn't have them next to me so I try to leave it 
just enough so that the person whose candle it is, if they want to trim it more, they can. Um, and once you cut it, when you cut it, it kind of squishes it. So I just like to do that to round it so that it looks like a nice round wick. Take that off and I'll put the label on the lid first. My trusty alcohol bottle. So I'll just spray the lid. Again, gets all those fingerprints off, dust, and just leaves you a clean surface. And it helps your label stick more. Um, if you have issues sticking your labels to things, especially glass, make sure you are cleaning it with alcohol first. So there's the top. There's a label on top. Now the body. Now I don't stick it in any specific place because um, it's all round or cylindrical possibly. Um, but I will clean the whole thing just in case because you never know if you clean one spot and then rotate it then you might be sticking it somewhere that it's not going to stick and then you'll have a messy label. So that is good to go go and usually I might do this on my lap so that I can brace the 10 between my knees but I'll see if I can do it it doesn't roll too much but I'll see if I can do it here but I'll hold the sides of the 10 like that I will line it up roll it a little bit and there. Rub it to get the air bubbles out. And there you go. Label top, label front, and there's your candle. It is all set to go. And I'll put the warning stickers on the bottom. Um, I usually have a couple different designs. I have some holographic ones, but it just depends on what I'm feeling that day. They don't get used a ton just because I don't have a style anymore that uses them. And I'll show you how I store my printed labels. So I have a binder. Yes, that says 2021 but that's because I haven't switched it this year not that it matters and up front I just have like my mixing notes percentage charts planners and back here I have all of my labels so I have them separated by size and these are the two inch round labels so two inch round I will see there's my warning labels. I will hole punch. My hole punch is going walkies at the moment, but while I'm here, I will grab one of these. These are just Avery labels. I for stuff like the warning stickers, um, I didn't see a need to throw out these just because I changed label types. So they're still getting used even though I change styles. So I will hole punch these or if I can't find my hole punch I'll just stick them in there for the time being. And then for these I will stick huh. well I clearly haven't made a spot for these yet in my book so <laughs> will just stick them here in the front so that I know they need to be hole punched and go in there. So that is it for how I prep my candles. Um, you see me pour a candle, wick a container, and now label and finish. And so the next step, I might actually change this out because I don't like that blue on it. The next step is for me to 
pack and ship it. Um, yeah, nothing too special with that because they're the tins, but um, I will do another video when I deal with the glass ones because I use a very special shipping box for that. So thank you for watching and have a good day.